What are feathers made of? Birds have many different kinds of feathers, each of which performs a different function. Some feathers, the small, soft down used in pillows and winter jackets, are designed to keep the bird warm, others are specifically used for flight. While some feathers are pure decoration, intended to help the bird find a mate. Feathers consist of a shaft in the middle with pairs of branches, called barbs, attached. The surface formed by the barbs is called the vein. On the feathers of some birds, the barbs in turn have smaller branches called barbules. The barbules from one barb connect to those of the barb next to it by little hooks. Making the feather stiffer and stronger. Before the invention of the modern ink pen, people filled the hollow shafts of feathers. Called quills, with ink, and used them as writing instruments. In societies all over the world, people have also used feathers to decorate clothing or hats. Or to make garments worn during important ceremonies. What is the largest bird? The ostrich is the largest living bird, some extinct species were larger. Found primarily in Africa, the male ostrich can grow to be nearly 8 feet, 2.5 meters. Tall, with its neck making up almost half of its height, females are a bit smaller. Ostriches can weigh almost 350 pounds, 159 kilograms. These flightless birds travel in groups and can frequently be found in the company of other grazing animals. People have harvested ostrich feathers for hundreds of years to decorate hats and other items. And in recent years ostrich meat has become more popular. What do fish do in the winter when water freezes? If a body of water freezes completely, from the surface to the bottom. Fish cannot survive for long unless they are like the Antarctic ice fish. Which has chemicals resembling antifreeze in its blood to help it survive in water below freezing temperatures. For other kinds of fish, as long as there is some unfrozen water beneath the ice. They can generally survive the winter. The danger in such wintry conditions is not freezing to death but suffocating. Ice on the water's surface makes it hard for oxygen in the air to dissolve in the water. Fish can survive in very cold water in the same way land animals like bears can live out the winter. By becoming dormant, meaning slowing down bodily processes, eating very little, and consuming less oxygen. Why do some animals carry their young around in pouches? Some mammals, like kangaroos, koalas, and possums, are called marsupials. When marsupial babies are born, they are incompletely developed. 
they continue developing outside the womb, in many cases living for a time in a pouch. A large fold of skin called a marsupium, on the mother's body. The marsupium keeps the developing baby warm and close to the mother's nipples. Where it can feed around the clock on the milk the mother produces. Most marsupial species are found in and around Australia, but several species, including the opossum, can be found in North and South America. Do ostriches really bury their heads in sand? This supposed ostrich behavior has been referred to countless times in warning. People not to bury their heads in the sand and ignore their problems. But the fact is that ostriches do not bury their heads in sand when danger approaches. They kick up their heels and run. Sometimes, to avoid being seen by nearby predators. The very tall ostrich will lie down and stretch its neck out on the ground. This behavior may have been spotted and misunderstood by people. Who began the tale of an ostrich burying its head in the sand? Ostriches also occasionally nibble on small pebbles or sand. A behavior that may give an observer the impression that they are trying to burrow into the sand. Can flying fish really fly? There are about 40 species known as flying fish. These small fish, around 18 inches, or 45 centimeters, long, are found in warm waters all over the world. They don't technically fly, but they can glide through the air, using wing-like fins and a powerful tail. When chased by a predator, a flying fish heads straight for the water's surface at a rapid speed. With its fins tucked in close to its body. As it breaks the surface of the water, it spreads its wings and uses its flapping tail. Still underwater, to give it an extra boost. Flying fish don't go very high, usually just a few feet above the water, but they can glide for fairly long distances. As it reaches the water after a glide, a flying fish can use its tail to propel it up again for another run. Like a skipping rock that makes several bounces. A single glide can take a flying fish as far as 600 feet, 180 meters. And the total distance traveled over a series of consecutive glides can be as far as 1,300 feet, 400 meters. Why are male birds more colorful than female birds? In some species, like the North American cardinal, the male bird has brilliantly colored feathers while the female's feathers are drab and dark. One reason the males have a more colorful appearance is so they can capture the attention of the female bird they wish to mate with. The male's bright colors also come in handy after mating. When he's protecting the nest and sending a clear signal to other males to keep away from his territory. The female's dull colors, 
on the other hand. Help her blend in with the branches surrounding her nest and avoid being seen by enemies. If her feathers were bright like the males, she would be easily spotted by predators. And she would have to leave her nest unprotected if attacked. Why do beavers build dams? Beavers have amazing construction and engineering skills. They are among few animals that make dramatic changes to their environment to provide shelter for themselves and their young. Beavers are semi-aquatic, which means they spend much of their time in water. Usually streams, rivers, and lakes. These hard-working creatures build dams using sticks, branches, mud, and anything else they can find to change the course of a stream. Sending some of the stream's water to flood another area in order to create a small pond. In that pond they can then build a lodge, a large domed structure where the beaver family can spend the winter. The lodge is built of the same materials used for the dam. Beavers use their long, powerful teeth to cut down branches and even whole trees. They then drag or float the wood over to the side of the lodge. Sometimes using canals, or narrow passages filled with water, that they built themselves. They pack the sticks together using mud, which freezes in the winter. Turning the beaver lodge into a strong fort that predators can't get into. While the lodge itself sticks out above the surface of the water, sometimes nearly six feet. Or almost two meters, the entrance to the lodge is underwater, giving the beavers further protection. In the months before winter approaches. Beavers begin stockpiling food, including water plants, branches, and leaves. They anchor their food stash in the water just outside the lodge's entrance. So throughout the winter their food supply is nearby. Beavers have thick, shiny coats that have long been attractive to people in the fur trade. The North American beaver nearly became extinct in the 1930s due to extensive trapping for its fur. Another notable feature of these animals is their broad, flat tails that can be up to a foot long in some larger beavers. Beavers use their tails to steer when they are swimming and to help prop them up when they are standing. They also use them to communicate with other beavers. Slapping their tails on the water to produce a loud warning sound when a predator approaches. What is the largest fish? The largest living fish is the whale shark. It usually grows to about 30 feet, 9 meters, in length, but some have been measured at more than 50 feet. 15 meters, long, weighing several tons, a ton is 2,000 pounds, or 908 kilograms. These gentle giants pose little threat to humans, however. They have very small teeth and eat mainly fish and plankton. Which are tiny organisms that drift in both salt water and fresh water, providing food for numerous animals. 
whale sharks, recognizable by their distinctive skin pattern of small dots and stripes. Swim very slowly, just beneath the surface of the water. Are bats blind? The expression blind as a bat would indicate that bats are blind. But in fact scientists believe they have fairly good eyesight. Bats are nocturnal creatures, coming out after dark to find insects and other food. Some bats, just like humans, can't see very well in the dark. But they make up for this with a unique navigating system called echolocation. These bats make a series of high-pitched sounds, frequently above the hearing range of humans. That bounce off nearby objects, like rocks, trees, or insects. The echoes of these sounds, when they reach the bat's highly sensitive ears. Tell the bat where the object is and even, in the case of insects and other animals, what direction it is moving in. How do whales and other mammals stay underwater so long? All aquatic mammals, meaning those that live in water, have lungs and require air to breathe. Some, like dolphins, live close to the water's surface and come up for air around once or twice a minute. Other sea mammals find their food by diving deep into the ocean. So they must be able to hold their breath for longer periods of time. They can do this because they take in a great deal of air with each breath their lungs take up a larger percentage of their body than do human lungs. Their bodies can also hold on to the oxygen they breathe better than human bodies can. Oxygen is required in every part of the body, for every bodily function. But when marine mammals go down for a deep dive, their oxygen is only sent to the most important parts, the heart, brain, and muscles used for swimming. The rest of the body the stomach, for example must wait until the dive is finished to get its oxygen. Human beings can hold their breath underwater for an average of one minute. A hippopotamus can stay underwater for 15 minutes. The sperm whale and bottlenose whale can stay underwater the longest. Some have been recorded on dives that lasted nearly two hours. Why do whales blow water up into the air? A whale has one or two nostrils or blowholes located far back on the top of its head. A toothed whale has one, a baleen whale has two. Whales can only breathe through their blowholes, which are directly connected to their lungs. Their mouths lead only to the stomach. Blowholes have valves that close when a whale dives. A whale may dive as deep as one mile below the ocean surface and stay underwater for well over an hour. When a whale returns to the surface it spouts, blowing the warm, moist air that has formed in its lungs out through its blowholes before it takes a fresh breath. 
the water that has collected on top of the blowholes gets blown into the air along with the whale's breath. Sometimes, the spouting of a large whale can be seen for miles. The type of whale can often be identified by the shape of its spout. Why do whales blow water up into the air? A whale has one or two nostrils or blowholes located far back on the top of its head. A toothed whale has one, a baleen whale has two. Whales can only breathe through their blowholes, which are directly connected to their lungs. Their mouths lead only to the stomach. Blowholes have valves that close when a whale dives. A whale may dive as deep as one mile below the ocean surface and stay underwater for well over an hour. When a whale returns to the surface it spouts, blowing the warm, moist air that has formed in its lungs out through its blowholes before it takes a fresh breath. The water that has collected on top of the blowholes gets blown into the air along with the whale's breath. Sometimes, the spouting of a large whale can be seen for miles. The type of whale can often be identified by the shape of its spout. Why do some whales make sounds underwater? with special instruments. People have been able to record the deep sounds that some whales make as they swim underwater. The mellow sounds are so lovely to listen to that they have been recorded on compact discs and tapes and sold in stores. Some whale sounds resemble barking and can be heard by humans. Whales also make clicking sounds that people can only hear with the help of special equipment. Scientists think that whales use these sounds to help them find their way and keep track of one another. Whales travel in groups, called pods, as they swim in the deep and often dark ocean. This technique is called echolocation. The vocalizations bounce off objects, creating echoes that return to the whale. Whales can see fairly well with their small eyes, but their hearing is extraordinary. Echolocation can tell the whale how big an object is, how far away it is, and in what direction it is traveling. Why do some whales make sounds underwater? With special instruments. People have been able to record the deep sounds that some whales make as they swim underwater. The mellow sounds are so lovely to listen to that they have been recorded on compact discs and tapes and sold in stores. Some whale sounds resemble barking and can be heard by humans. Whales also make clicking sounds that people can only hear with the help of special equipment. Scientists think that whales use these sounds to help them find their way and keep track of one another. Whales travel in groups called pods, as they swim in the deep and often dark ocean. This technique is called echolocation.
the vocalizations bounce off objects, creating echoes that return to the whale. Whales can see fairly well with their small eyes, but their hearing is extraordinary. Echolocation can tell the whale how big an object is. How far away it is, and in what direction it is traveling. How is a porpoise different from a dolphin? Both porpoises and dolphins are types of whales, they are closely related to one another. Porpoises are usually smaller, 4 to 6 feet, about 1 to 2 meters. Long while dolphins average about 8 feet, 2.4 meters, in length. The snout of a porpoise is more rounded, and its teeth are flatter. A dolphin has a long snout and cone-shaped teeth. Dolphins have long been studied for their intelligence, they are very fast learners. For the enormous variety of sounds that they make to communicate, whistles, clicks, and squeaks, and for the tender way that they care for one another and sometimes for human beings. There have been many reports of dolphins saving the lives of people who were drowning or divers who were lost. The most familiar dolphin species is the bottlenose dolphin. Most dolphins in aquariums are this type. Like many dolphins, this animal is graceful and very playful. Its snout gives the impression that the dolphin is smiling when its mouth is open. They can often be spotted on the open sea, following ships, and playfully leaping out of the water. How is a porpoise different from a dolphin? Both porpoises and dolphins are types of whales, they are closely related to one another. Porpoises are usually smaller, 4 to 6 feet, about 1 to 2 meters. Long while dolphins average about 8 feet, 2.4 meters, in length. The snout of a porpoise is more rounded, and its teeth are flatter. A dolphin has a long snout and cone-shaped teeth. Dolphins have long been studied for their intelligence, they are very fast learners. For the enormous variety of sounds that they make to communicate, whistles, clicks, and squeaks, and for the tender way that they care for one another and sometimes for human beings. There have been many reports of dolphins saving the lives of people who were drowning or divers who were lost. The most familiar dolphin species is the bottlenose dolphin. Most dolphins in aquariums are this type. Like many dolphins, this animal is graceful and very playful. Its snout gives the impression that the dolphin is smiling when its mouth is open. They can often be spotted on the open sea, following ships, and playfully leaping out of the water. Are all dolphins mammals? When we refer to dolphins, we usually mean the mammals that are in the same family with whales and porpoises. 
but there are some types of fish that are also referred to as dolphins one. That is known as mahi mahi or dorado and another called pompano dolphin. These fish popular in sport fishing and as food do not resemble the mammalian dolphins. Are all dolphins mammals? When we refer to dolphins, we usually mean the mammals that are in the same family with whales and porpoises. But there are some types of fish that are also referred to as dolphins one. That is known as mahi mahi or dorado and another called pompano dolphin. These fish popular in sport fishing and as food do not resemble the mammalian dolphins. Do killer whales attack humans? The killer whale, also known as orca, is a type of dolphin that can grow to be 31 feet. 9.5 meters, long and weigh 11,000 pounds, 5,000 kilograms. It eats fish, squid, and occasionally such sea mammals as seals and other dolphins. Despite its frightening name, the killer whale has never been known to attack a person. Killer whales are intelligent and, with their stark black and white coloring, dramatic looking animals. They learn quickly and can perform complex tasks. Abilities that have made them a favorite at aquariums and marine parks. Do killer whales attack humans? The killer whale, also known as orca, is a type of dolphin that can grow to be 31 feet. 9.5 meters, long and weigh 11,000 pounds, 5,000 kilograms. It eats fish, squid, and occasionally such sea mammals as seals and other dolphins. Despite its frightening name, the killer whale has never been known to attack a person. Killer whales are intelligent and, with their stark black and white coloring, dramatic looking animals. They learn quickly and can perform complex tasks. Abilities that have made them a favorite at aquariums and marine parks. How is a seal different from a sea lion? Sea lions are just one of many different types of seals. Seals, along with walruses, are classified as pinnipeds, a Latin word meaning fin-footed. As the name suggests, seals' limbs are flippers, they have one pair in front, and one pair in back. Seals are divided into two categories, earless, or true, seals, which have tiny ear holes but no external flaps and eared seals, so named because they have small ear flaps on their heads. Earless seals include the gray seal, harp seal, and the huge elephant seal, which can reach a length of 21 feet, 6.5 meters, and weigh 7,780 pounds, 
3,530 kg. Sea lions and fur seals are eared seals. There are several differences, in addition to the ears, between sea lions and their earless seal relatives. The sea lion's flippers are longer than those of earless seals. They look like wings and usually don't have hair on them, while seal's flippers are covered with hair. Sea lions can turn their hind flippers forward. Allowing them to use all of their limbs when moving on land. Seals cannot turn their hind flippers forward, and in order to move on land they slide on. Their bellies and pull with their front flippers, moving in much the same way as a caterpillar. How is a seal different from a sea lion? Sea lions are just one of many different types of seals. Seals, along with walruses, are classified as pinnipeds, a Latin word meaning fin-footed. As the name suggests, seals' limbs are flippers, they have one pair in front, and one pair in back. Seals are divided into two categories, earless, or true, seals, which have tiny ear holes but no external flaps. And eared seals, so named because they have small ear flaps on their heads. Earless seals include the gray seal, harp seal, and the huge elephant seal, which can reach a length of 21 feet, 6.5 meters, and weigh 7,780 pounds, 3,530 kilograms. Sea lions and fur seals are eared seals. There are several differences, in addition to the ears, between sea lions and their earless seal relatives. The sea lion's flippers are longer than those of earless seals. They look like wings and usually don't have hair on them, while seals' flippers are covered with hair. Sea lions can turn their hind flippers forward, allowing them to use all of their limbs when moving on land. Seals cannot turn their hind flippers forward, and in order to move on land they slide on. Their bellies and pull with their front flippers, moving in much the same way as a caterpillar. How can animals live in a desert? The harsh conditions of desert life present many problems for the animals living there, temperatures get extremely high. Water is scarce, and food supplies, whether in the form of plants or other animals, dwindle. Desert animals have developed numerous techniques, however, to adapt to their unique climate. Just as animals living in cold climates hibernate in winter, so do some desert animals live through dry periods by becoming dormant, or inactive. Desert toads bury themselves deep in the ground. Emerging only after a rainfall to get water and food and to breed. Many desert animals live in underground burrows or in caves, such animals spend hot. Dry days in their dens, away from the sun, coming out in the early morning or at night when it's cooler. Several desert animals are especially equipped to handle hotter temperatures. The large ears of jackrabbits can release heat while they rest in the shade. 
Owls and some other birds release body heat through their open mouths. Letting their saliva evaporate to cool down their bodies. Many desert residents have pale fur, feathers, scales, or skin. An adaptation that means they absorb less of the sun's heat. They also blend in better with their sandy surroundings, which means they are less visible to predators. The meat eaters in the desert can sometimes get all of the moisture they need from eating their prey. Or, in the case of vultures, from eating carrion, or the flesh of already dead animals. Other desert animals are able to conserve the moisture they do get in amazing ways. The kangaroo rat, for example, can actually create water from the dry seeds it eats. And its kidneys can remove most of the water from its urine, sending the water back through the rat's bloodstream. Thanks to their ability to fly. Birds probably have the easiest time escaping the desert's difficult conditions. They can fly great distances if necessary to find areas where rain has fallen and vegetation is growing. Large winged birds can spend the hottest part of the day soaring way up high where the winds are cooler. How can animals live in a desert? The harsh conditions of desert life present many problems for the animals living there, temperatures get extremely high. Water is scarce, and food supplies, whether in the form of plants or other animals, dwindle. Desert animals have developed numerous techniques, however, to adapt to their unique climate. Just as animals living in cold climates hibernate in winter. So do some desert animals live through dry periods by becoming dormant, or inactive. Desert toads bury themselves deep in the ground. Emerging only after a rainfall to get water and food and to breed. Many desert animals live in underground burrows or in caves, such animals spend hot. Dry days in their dens, away from the sun, coming out in the early morning or at night when it's cooler. Several desert animals are especially equipped to handle hotter temperatures. The large ears of jackrabbits can release heat while they rest in the shade. Owls and some other birds release body heat through their open mouths. Letting their saliva evaporate to cool down their bodies. Many desert residents have pale fur, feathers, scales, or skin. An adaptation that means they absorb less of the sun's heat. They also blend in better with their sandy surroundings, which means they are less visible to predators. The meat eaters in the desert can sometimes get all of the moisture they need from eating their prey. Or, in the case of vultures, from eating carrion, or the flesh of already dead animals. Other desert animals are able to conserve the moisture they do get in amazing ways. The kangaroo rat, for example, can actually create water from the dry seeds it eats. And its kidneys can remove most of the water from its urine, sending the water back through the rat's bloodstream. Thanks to their ability to fly. Birds probably have the easiest time escaping the desert's difficult conditions. They can fly great distances if necessary to find areas where rain has fallen and vegetation is growing. 
large winged birds can spend the hottest part of the day soaring way up high where the winds are cooler. Do camels really store water in their humps? Camels store fat, not water, in the humps on their backs. Living in desert environments, camels use this stored fat for energy if food is not available. The animals can go days without eating. A camel can also go days without drinking because there are pockets in the walls of its stomach that hold water, released bit by bit as the animal needs it. A camel can drink up to 50 gallons, 189 liters, of water at one time and store it. There are two types of camels, the Arabian camel or dromedary native to northern Africa which has one hump, and the Bactrian camel native to Central Asia which has two. For centuries, camels have been used by people to cross the desert, either rid den or used as pack animals carrying supplies. That is why the large, strong beast has often been called the ship of the desert. Able to endure intense heat, camels have many other features that make them well suited to desert surroundings. They're broad, Padded hooves do not sink in the sand and there. Long eyelashes and hair-filled nostrils protect their eyes and airways from blowing grit. But their most unique features are their stomachs and humps of fat. At the beginning of a desert journey, when a camel is well fed, its hump can weigh nearly 100 pounds, 45 kilograms. At the end of a long, hard trip, the hump nearly disappears. And all that is left is the loose skin that once covered it kind of like a furry balloon that has lost its air. Do camels really store water in their humps? Camels store fat, not water, in the humps on their backs. Living in desert environments, camels use this stored fat for energy if food is not available. The animals can go days without eating. A camel can also go days without drinking because there are pockets in the walls of its stomach that hold water released bit by bit as the animal needs it. A camel can drink up to 50 gallons, 189 liters, of water at one time and store it. There are two types of camels, the Arabian camel or dromedary native to northern Africa which has one hump, and the Bactrian camel native to Central Asia which has two. For centuries, camels have been used by people to cross the desert, either rid den or used as pack animals carrying supplies. That is why the large, strong beast has often been called the ship of the desert. Able to endure intense heat, camels have many other features that make them well suited to desert surroundings. They're broad, padded hooves do not sink in the sand and there. Long eyelashes and hair-filled nostrils protect their eyes and airways from blowing grit. But their most unique features are their stomachs and humps of fat. At the beginning of a desert journey, when a camel is well fed, 
its hump can weigh nearly 100 pounds, 45 kilograms. At the end of a long, hard trip, the hump nearly disappears. And all that is left is the loose skin that once covered it kind of like a furry balloon that has lost its air. Why are polar bears white? The polar bear lives in the Arctic, the region of the North Pole. Most of its environment is barren, covered year-round with ice and snow and not much else. A polar bear might eat what few plants it can find. But it feeds mostly on water animals like seals and small walruses, which share its frozen home. The polar bear's yellowish white coat helps it blend into its snowy surroundings as it hunts its prey. After all, there is not much in the Arctic to hide behind. The fur of a polar bear is also extremely thick. Allowing it to withstand polar temperatures and swim in Arctic waters, where its prey is often found. Polar bears are excellent swimmers. And their unique paws with hairy soles allow them to run very quickly over ice and snow without slipping. Why are polar bears white? The polar bear lives in the Arctic, the region of the North Pole. Most of its environment is barren, covered year-round with ice and snow and not much else. A polar bear might eat what few plants it can find. But it feeds mostly on water animals like seals and small walruses, which share its frozen home. The polar bear's yellowish white coat helps it blend into its snowy surroundings as it hunts its prey. After all, there is not much in the Arctic to hide behind. The fur of a polar bear is also extremely thick. Allowing it to withstand polar temperatures and swim in Arctic waters, where its prey is often found. Polar bears are excellent swimmers. And their unique paws with hairy soles allow them to run very quickly over ice and snow without slipping. Why are zebras striped? Zebras are black and white, or brown and white. Striped members of the horse family that live and graze in the grassy open plains and brush country of Africa. They usually live in large herds of several hundred. Although they are fast runners, up to 40 miles, or 60 kilometers per hour, they are often overtaken by lions and leopards, their main predators. It would seem that such bold stripes and stark colors would make the zebra an easy target for its predators. But scientists believe that their stripes help zebras blend in with each other. Making it difficult for a predator to single out one zebra to attack. Some have suggested that zebra stripes resemble patterns of light and shadow in brush and grass. Fooling the animal's predators from a distance.
Why are zebras striped? Zebras are black and white, or brown and white. Striped members of the horse family that live and graze in the grassy open plains and brush country of Africa. They usually live in large herds of several hundred. Although they are fast runners, up to 40 miles, or 60 kilometers per hour, they are often overtaken by lions and leopards, their main predators. It would seem that such bold stripes and stark colors would make the zebra an easy target for its predators. But scientists believe that their stripes help zebras blend in with each other. Making it difficult for a predator to single out one zebra to attack. Some have suggested that zebra stripes resemble patterns of light and shadow in brush and grass. Fooling the animal's predators from a distance. Why are leopards spotted? Like the fur of many animals, the leopard's coat is a form of camouflage. Camouflage helps animals blend in with their environments. Making them less visible to predators, the animals that hunt them, and prey, the creatures they hunt. Mostly found in the forests of Africa and Asia, leopards, which hunt in trees and on the ground. Blend in with the dappled sunlight shining through leafy tree branches and other plant life. Melanin is the organic chemical responsible for the pigmentation or color of animal and human skin. The more pigmentation, the darker the color. Black panthers are really leopards that have melanism, a condition of excess pigmentation. If you look closely at a black panther, careful. You may be able to see the same spots that a normal leopard has against a very dark background. Because leopards are mostly nocturnal resting during the day and active. At night this dark coloration causes little problem for black panthers. Why are leopards spotted? Like the fur of many animals, the leopard's coat is a form of camouflage. Camouflage helps animals blend in with their environments. Making them less visible to predators, the animals that hunt them, and prey, the creatures they hunt. Mostly found in the forests of Africa and Asia, leopards, which hunt in trees and on the ground. Blend in with the dappled sunlight shining through leafy tree branches and other plant life. Melanin is the organic chemical responsible for the pigmentation or color of animal and human skin. The more pigmentation, the darker the color. Black panthers are really leopards that have melanism, a condition of excess pigmentation. If you look closely at a black panther, careful. You may be able to see the same spots that a normal leopard has against a very dark background. Because leopards are mostly nocturnal resting during the day and active. At night this dark coloration causes little problem for black panthers.
Why is the lion known as the king of beasts? The lion is one of the largest members of the cat family. Found mostly in the open country of Central Africa. A male lion can reach up to 9 feet, 2.7 meters, long, including his tail. And weigh almost 400 pounds, 182 kilograms, the female is somewhat smaller. Powerfully built, lions can take down large. Swift running animals like zebra and antelope, on which they feed. Unique to the cat family, the male lion possesses a black or brown mane of long hair that grows on its neck, head, and shoulders. The mane can become quite enormous. The size and power of the male lion, his hunting habits, and his impressive mane have all likely contributed to his label as king of beasts. Lions also have commanding, thunderous roars, which can sometimes be heard more than a mile away. That, undoubtedly, have also contributed to their kingly reputation. Why is the lion known as the king of beasts? The lion is one of the largest members of the cat family. Found mostly in the open country of Central Africa. A male lion can reach up to 9 feet, 2.7 meters, long, including his tail. And weigh almost 400 pounds, 182 kilograms, the female is somewhat smaller. Powerfully built, lions can take down large. Swift running animals like zebra and antelope, on which they feed. Unique to the cat family, the male lion possesses a black or brown mane of long hair that grows on its neck, head, and shoulders. The mane can become quite enormous. The size and power of the male lion, his hunting habits, and his impressive mane have all likely contributed to his label as king of beasts. Lions also have commanding, thunderous roars, which can sometimes be heard more than a mile away. That, undoubtedly, have also contributed to their kingly reputation. Do snakes have slimy skin? Looking at a snake, many people might assume that its skin feels wet and slimy. But snakes, like all reptiles, actually have dry, scaly skin. This tough outer covering helps reptiles keep necessary amounts of moisture in their bodies. Some snakes have a ridge in the middle of their scales, but many are smooth to the touch. Depending on its external conditions if it's lying in a cold, shady spot or basking on a hot, sunny rock its skin will either feel cool or warm to the touch. Why are polar bears white?
The polar bear lives in the Arctic, the region of the North Pole. Most of its environment is barren, covered year-round with ice and snow and not much else. A polar bear might eat what few plants it can find. But it feeds mostly on water animals like seals and small walruses, which share its frozen home. The polar bear's yellowish-white coat helps it blend into its snowy surroundings as it hunts its prey. After all, there is not much in the Arctic to hide behind. The fur of a polar bear is also extremely thick. Allowing it to withstand polar temperatures and swim in Arctic waters, where its prey is often found. Polar bears are excellent swimmers. And their unique paws with hairy soles allow them to run very quickly over ice and snow without slipping. What is a mammal? A mammal is an animal that belongs to the highest class of vertebrates. A vertebrate is an animal that has a backbone and a spinal cord, the other types of vertebrates are birds. Reptiles, amphibians, and fish. Human beings are mammals. All female mammals give birth to live young. With the exception of the platypus duck and the spiny anteater, which reproduce by laying eggs. But regardless of how their babies are born, all female mammals nurse their young with milk, which they produce from mammary glands. A mammal is warm blooded, which means that its body temperature is internally regulated and constant, and does not change with different surroundings. Most mammals are covered either partially or completely with hair or fur. As opposed to the scales of reptiles and fish and the feathers of birds. Mammals also share certain features in their bone structure. Muscles, and even cells that separate them from other vertebrates. When we think of wild animals, farm animals, or pets. We usually think of creatures that belong to the mammal class. Chimpanzees, elephants, bears, horses, pigs, dogs and cats. And countless other land animals are all mammals. Some mammals also live in unexpected places, whales and dolphins. For example, are uniquely adapted to spend their lives in the water. They have fish-like, hairless bodies, and their limbs have been modified into flippers. But unlike their fish neighbors, these mammals have air-breathing lungs instead of water-breathing gills. Bats, the only true flying mammals, spend much of their time in the sky. Their wings are made of skin stretched from their very long fingers along the sides of their bodies to their hind legs and tails. How can animals live in a desert? The harsh conditions of desert life present many problems for the animals living there, temperatures get extremely high. Water is scarce, and food supplies, whether in the form of plants or other animals, dwindle. Desert animals have developed numerous techniques, however, to adapt to their unique climate. 
just as animals living in cold climates hibernate in winter. So do some desert animals live through dry periods by becoming dormant, or inactive? Desert toads bury themselves deep in the ground. Emerging only after a rainfall to get water and food and to breed. Many desert animals live in underground burrows or in caves, such animals spend hot. Dry days in their dens, away from the sun, coming out in the early morning or at night when it's cooler. Several desert animals are especially equipped to handle hotter temperatures. The large ears of jackrabbits can release heat while they rest in the shade. Owls and some other birds release body heat through their open mouths. Letting their saliva evaporate to cool down their bodies. Many desert residents have pale fur, feathers, scales, or skin. An adaptation that means they absorb less of the sun's heat. They also blend in better with their sandy surroundings, which means they are less visible to predators. The meat eaters in the desert can sometimes get all of the moisture they need from eating their prey. Or, in the case of vultures, from eating carrion, or the flesh of already dead animals. Other desert animals are able to conserve the moisture they do get in amazing ways. The kangaroo rat, for example, can actually create water from the dry seeds it eats. And its kidneys can remove most of the water from its urine, sending the water back through the rat's bloodstream. Thanks to their ability to fly. Birds probably have the easiest time escaping the desert's difficult conditions. They can fly great distances if necessary to find areas where rain has fallen and vegetation is growing. Large winged birds can spend the hottest part of the day soaring way up high where the winds are cooler. How do snakes move without legs? Snakes have no arms or legs, yet they can move fairly swiftly through grass, sand, and, in some cases, water, and they can easily climb trees. Snakes can achieve such amazing mobility thanks to well-developed muscles and a row of scales. Called ventral scales, on the undersides of their bodies. They usually rely on the ground's rough surface to provide resistance. Something for them to push against that isn't slippery. Most snakes move by coiling their bodies into a series of S-shaped loops. With each loop pushing against the ground. Some large snakes, like boas, move in a way similar to a caterpillar, inching along the ground. Snakes that live in the desert have a harder time getting the traction necessary for movement. These snakes, called sidewinders, move in a sideways motion that allows them to slither along on the ever-shifting sandy surface. While the absence of limbs might seem like a handicap, Snakes have certain advantages thanks to their unique bodies. Not only can they move quickly and easily over and through a variety of landscapes. They can also move in near silence, making it easy for them to sneak up on their prey. And their narrow, flexible bodies allow them to fit into small crevices and holes where They can wait for unsuspecting animals to come along, 
or where they can hide from predators. How can their knees bend that way? The answer is, they don't. What appear to be flamingos' knees are actually their ankles. Their knees are up closer to their bodies, hidden by feathers. And they are actually standing on their toes. Why does a flamingo stand on one leg? Scientists don't know for sure why flamingos stand on one leg at a time. Sometimes for several hours, but they have several theories. Some people believe that flamingos lift up one leg so they are less visible to their prey. Standing on one leg, they may resemble a tree to the aquatic creatures they are hunting. During cooler weather, bringing one leg up close to the body can help conserve heat. Some have suggested that standing first on one leg and then the other. Helps promote the circulation of blood down flamingo's long, skinny legs. Flamingos can even sleep while standing on one leg, and some scientists think there is a connection. Between their own leg position and the way their brains function during sleep, one half of their bodies and brains can sleep while the other half, including the leg they stand on, remain somewhat alert. What is the smallest bird? The smallest living bird is the bee hummingbird, including its beak and tail. This bird measures only about 2 inches, 5.5 centimeters, and weighs about two-thirds of an ounce, 20 grams. The more than 300 species of beautiful, brightly colored hummingbirds live throughout North and South America. They can flap their wings at amazing speeds the smaller species beat their wings. From 60 to 80 times per second and they are the only birds who can fly upside down. The special structure of their wings also enables them to fly backwards. Sideways, and straight up and down. Hummingbirds get their food by hovering over plants and inserting their long, thin beaks into flowers to get the nectar, and insects, inside. Some can hover for close to an hour at a time. Like bees and other nectar-eating creatures, hummingbirds help to spread pollen. The dusty grains that allow fertilization in plants. The pollen clings to their feathers when they come in contact with the male parts of a flower and gets deposited in another plant's female parts, thus helping to produce new plants. Because of their unusually small size, often brilliantly colored feathers and extraordinary methods of flying, hummingbirds are favorites with birdwatchers. How do penguins keep their eggs warm?
some penguins lay their eggs in nests like other birds. The emperor and king penguins, however, have an unusual method of keeping their eggs warm. While the female makes a long trek from the penguin colony to the water in search of food. The male places the egg on top of his feet, where it can nestle up against his warm body. For this entire incubation period, the male penguin carefully balances the egg on his feet. Living off stored fat while he is unable go find food. When a storm hits, all of the male penguins huddle together. Into a circle to provide some protection from high winds. After the egg hatches, the parent must continue holding it on its feet because the baby doesn't have enough insulating feathers, or down, to keep it warm on its own. When it's old enough, the baby penguin joins a large group of other babies. A few adults stand guard over the little ones while their parents seek food. When the parents return to the colony, they call to their chick. The parents can recognize their baby among the dozens of others by its appearance and its distinctive voice. Why are zebras striped? Zebras are black and white, or brown and white. Striped members of the horse family that live and graze in the grassy open plains and brush country of Africa. They usually live in large herds of several hundred. Although they are fast runners, up to 40 miles, or 60 kilometers per hour, they are often overtaken by lions and leopards, their main predators. It would seem that such bold stripes and stark colors would make the zebra an easy target for its predators. But scientists believe that their stripes help zebras blend in with each other, making it difficult for a predator to single out one zebra to attack. Some have suggested that zebra stripes resemble patterns of light and shadow in brush and grass. Fooling the animal's predators from a distance. Why don't predators of poisonous snakes die from eating venom? When animals that feed on poisonous snakes eat their prey, they also eat the venom that snake has stored up. But this venom that would kill other animals does not kill the snake's predator. Why? Because these predators have a built-in resistance to the venom of the snakes they eat. An opossum can eat a rattlesnake, venom, and all, and only suffer a mild reaction. The same amount of venom that goes into the opossum's stomach would be enough to kill a horse. Why do birds sing? Just as people talk to each other to accomplish a number of different things. So do birds sing for a variety of reasons. Perhaps the primary reason birds sing, and squawk, call, or chirp, is to attract or communicate with a possible mate. Once a mate has been chosen, 
the male bird sings to announce his choice and warn other males away from his mate. If approached by a hostile male, a bird might make threatening noises to scare his opponent away without having to fight. Birds also call to other birds to alert them to a good food source, or warn them that a predator is coming. Baby birds sing to let their parents know they are hungry. And sometimes birds sing for no apparent reason, just because they can. There is an actual scientific category of birds called songbirds. It includes several thousand species nearly half of all bird types and covers larks, swallows, and most birds that people keep as pets. Not all songbirds have pretty voices, like the harsh-voiced crow, for example, and some sing very rarely. On the other hand, some birds that are not classified as songbirds have beautiful songs. A bird is classified as a songbird because it has special voice-producing organs. Not necessarily because it produces the most lovely song. Why do hummingbirds hum? The joke answer, because they don't know the words. The real answer, hummingbirds wings flap so quickly that they create a high-pitched humming sound. Just as mosquitoes and other insects generate a buzzing sound from their high-speed wing flapping. Do camels really store water in their humps? Camels store fat, not water, in the humps on their backs. Living in desert environments, camels use this stored fat for energy if food is not available. The animals can go days without eating. A camel can also go days without drinking because there are pockets in the walls of its stomach that hold water, released bit by bit as the animal needs it. A camel can drink up to 50 gallons, 189 liters, of water at one time and store it. There are two types of camels the Arabian camel or dromedary native to northern Africa which has one hump, and the Bactrian camel native to Central Asia which has two. For centuries, camels have been used by people to cross the desert, either ridden or used as pack animals carrying supplies. That is why the large, Strong beast has often been called the ship of the desert. Able to endure intense heat, camels have many other features that make them well suited to desert surroundings. Their broad, padded hooves do not sink in the sand and their long eyelashes and hair-filled nostrils protect their eyes and airways from blowing grit. But their most unique features are their stomachs and humps of fat. At the beginning of a desert journey, when a camel is well fed, its hump can weigh nearly 100 pounds, 45 kilograms. At the end of a long, hard trip, the hump nearly disappears. And all that is left is the loose skin that once covered it kind of like a furry balloon that has lost its air. Why do woodpeckers make such a racket?
Most woodpeckers spend most of their lives in trees. But instead of perching on a branch, woodpeckers spend their days climbing up the tree in a spiral pattern. Searching for insects to eat. Some also eat berries and fruit, and others, called the sap suckers, eat tree sap. They find insects by repeatedly and rapidly pecking at tree bark with their sharp bills. An action that produces the telltale hammering noise. Woodpeckers have long, thin tongues that they use to reach into the holes they've created and pull out insects. Woodpeckers also peck at trees to carve out holes they can use for nests. Male woodpeckers make such tapping noises to attract a mate and to tell other males where their territory is, and to keep away from it. Woodpeckers have thick, strong skulls that protect their brains and other organs from the stress of their repeated pecking. Why do whales blow water up into the air? A whale has one or two nostrils or blowholes located far back on the top of its head. A toothed whale has one, a baleen whale has two. Whales can only breathe through their blowholes, which are directly connected to their lungs. Their mouths lead only to the stomach. Blowholes have valves that close when a whale dives. A whale may dive as deep as one mile below the ocean surface and stay underwater for well over an hour. When a whale returns to the surface it spouts, blowing the warm, moist air that has formed in its lungs out through its blowholes before it takes a fresh breath. The water that has collected on top of the blowholes gets blown into the air along with the whale's breath. Sometimes, the spouting of a large whale can be seen for miles. The type of whale can often be identified by the shape of its spout. Why are penguins black and white? The trademark tuxedo-like coloring of penguins. With their black backs and white fronts, is called counter shading. This kind of coloration is found in many fish and other aquatic animals that swim close to the surface because it helps hide them from sight in the water. When viewed from below, the white-bellied penguin blends in with the Lighter appearance of water near the surface, when seen from above. The penguin's black back can't be distinguished from the dark depths of the sea. <laughs>